Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we find ourselves on Captiva Island in the great state of Florida. Here we are at one of the quirkiest, unusual, and most wonderful restaurants around, the world famous Bubble Room. Tag along. Even from the outside, you can tell that the bubble room is something unique. With vivid colors and wonderful little pieces all over the top of it, this place is begging to be explored. And once inside the actual bubble room, it does not disappoint. This place is just as quirky and eccentric as you would want it to be. With an unending assortment of things placed throughout the restaurant, as well as vintage photographs all over the walls, your eyes aren't even going to know where to look first. If a roadside attraction, a museum, and an antique shop all ever had a baby together, it would certainly be this, the bubble room. But why that name? Why is it called the Bubble Room? Well, this location takes its name from the wonderful bubble lights of old. They happen to have these in almost every room there, and the Bubble Room just sounded catchy. If you look up, you can see the bubble lights lining this entire room, bubbling away and filling the space up with colorful, cheerful light. They certainly add a unique and character-filled vibe to this wonderful location. And if you look closely, you may notice that most of the photographs that are on the walls have to do with old actors, old movies, just that golden age of Hollywood in several of the rooms, as well as random knickknacks here and there. But there's some other great things about the bubble room, such as the fact that here at the Bubble Room, every day is Christmas Day. So of course, they had to have a classic Christmas tree and plenty of decorations just to get you in that holiday spirit. As a matter of fact, every room has its own theme going on. Here they celebrated Humphrey Bogart and other Golden Era stars. But one of my favorite rooms was the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It was almost like you had dived right in and there was nautical nonsense all over the place. There was one of the original movie posters, as well as some delightful paintings here that almost made you feel like you were sitting in the Nautilus. Speaking of the Nautilus, they had an example of it right here, all lit up and ready to go explore those ocean depths. And what would undersea adventure be without some fishy friends? One side of the wall was completely filled with these colorful guys as they swam back and forth on the ocean floor. Now, vintage things are usually pretty cool, but sometimes they can be a little on the creepy side as well. This room here with all these caricatures made in statue form, it was a little unnerving. I'm not sure if I would have been able to sit there and have these guys looking at me the whole time. But on the other hand, the vintage Disney room was pure delight. It was great seeing the iterations of these famous characters. There was even a baby Groot hanging out. I guess he likes being underwater. But peeking into these displays was almost like a little museum of its own, seeing these old Disney relics and things that used to be sold in stores. Mickey Mouse has always been a very popular guy, and this proved that he honestly hasn't changed all that much. There was even a giant Mickey hanging in the rafters, just to keep an eye on things. 
No matter who you were or what age, I think it's safe to say you'd find something here that made you smile. Another very creative area was the Alice in Wonderland section where several characters from the beloved book had shown up to have a little tea party just for your amusement. You just had to make sure you didn't get on the bad side of the Queen of Hearts. She could get a little testy at times. Honestly, I feel like this is one of those places that you could come back a hundred times and still see something new that you hadn't seen before. There was just that much to take in. It was truly a feast for the eyes. But speaking of feast, what about the food? There was no way we could miss out on having dinner here. By the way, even the tables are decorated with fascinating things inside them. They really go all out. The menu fit in perfectly, having a scattering of different things, most of them seafood related, which made sense here on an island, and I was certainly eager to try something yummy. And keeping with the theme, when you order a Coke, you get this delightful bottle, just to make you feel a little special. Not to mention, our section happened to come with a little entertainment as we ate, with these lovely dancing girls ready to show us their moves. So here at the Bubble Room, one of their famous pieces is this here, which is sticky buns and bubble bread. The bubble bread is supposedly delicious. We're gonna find out right now and throw it over to Blake. All right, so first we're gonna try the bubble bread. Very cheesy garlic bread. A lot of flavor, definitely pretty good. Sticky bun. Pretty good cinnamon bun. Maybe not super moist, but not as messy either as a normal cinnamon bun. I'm going to have to give both of these four stars. Now we got to try some of that world famous cake that they have. Let's see what flavors we pick. Cake is the Bubble Room's specialty. People come from all over just to get a slice of these delicious baked goods. They also know that picking your flavor is not only an important decision, but it can be a difficult one. So, your server happily brings out an entire tray with slices on it so you can see exactly which one you want. Today we had our choices of French chocolate torte, New York style cheesecake, red velvet, very moist chocolate, White Christmas, Tropical Breeze, Orange Crunch, and Jamaican Rum Cake. They all sounded delicious, especially when described by our Bubble Scout, which is what they call servers here at the Bubble Room. But why is that? Why are they called Bubble Scouts, and why do they wear uniforms? Well, we figured we needed to ask. I'm a Bubble Scout here at the Bubble Room. It was a restaurant started in 1979. It is a three-floor restaurant with five different dining rooms. We wear Bubble Scout uniforms, and a lot of people are curious as to why. I'm here to tell the story. When we started in 1979, we were just a first-floor restaurant. The owners lived upstairs, and they had a daughter. The daughter would go to school during the day, and as soon as she would get out of school, she would go to Girl Scouts. And as soon as she got done with Girl Scouts, straight to work, right in the uniform, never changed out. To make her feel a little bit more comfortable, they had the whole staff wear their Bubble Scout uniforms, and now everyone since 1979 has worn a Bubble Scout uniform to make that girl feel more comfortable. Now they have since moved out, but that didn't mean the tradition changed. We will still be wearing Bubble Scout uniforms probably until we are done. What a great story. But now, back to those cakes, which by the way, you can buy and take home too. So I decided to get the White Christmas, big coconut fan. Wow, that is really good. That's definitely a five-star cake right there. 
<laughs> All right, so I had to get a cake as well. He sold it to us really well. He said that this is the award-winning orange crunch. Got to try it. So let's see what it's like. Got a nice little orange here. I like that garnish. We're gonna take a nice chunk. Got that orange on there. Mmm. Oh man. That is amazing. It's got. Let me see. I'm gonna get a little bit of this crunchy part in here. Well, great. This is probably no joke the best cake I've ever had. Five out of five. Everybody needs to try this. With our bellies full, it was time to move on. But the experience wasn't quite over yet. And of course, like any good Florida attraction, they have their very own gift shop. The Bubble Room Emporium certainly kept the spirit of the Bubble Room alive, and it was filled once again with wonderful, unique, and quirky things to see. Of course, the main point of this room was to be more of a store. However, there was so much to see, it almost felt like more of a museum than anything. There was even a section where you could buy some amazing vintage items that you could take home and I guess start building a bubble room of your very own. A really interesting piece of memorabilia on display was this working car that had been built for Shirley Temple. When she was young, they had built her this fully operational toy car. This was not for sale, but was really cool to get to see. Just like the main bubble room, this little store was packed full of amazing things in every corner. Wherever you looked, there was something cool to see. Plus, you could pick up a snazzy t-shirt here if you wanted to. The vintage shooting gallery was really cool, and I only wish that it would have been operational so we could have given it a shot. Overall, this gift shop was an experience all on its own, and that's not something most stores manage to pull off. Well, my name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. Thanks for grabbing a bite with us. We'll see you next time.